Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. Behind me I've got Fedora Linux 39. I haven't used it yet, I haven't read about this release. I'm going in blind. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and explore Fedora Linux 39 uh, get an idea about what's changed. I, I haven't used Fedora Linux in about six months, so I'm excited to see what differences there are. And it's like uh, it's like whenever you you come home and you just slip back into an old pair of slippers that you've had for years. Uh, at least that's what I'm hoping it's gonna be like. That's what it's been like every other release. Uh, so we'll see if they keep up that trend. So that being said, let's go ahead and get into the setup process so that I can get you my impressions of Fedora Linux 39. Okay, this is the Fedora Linux 39 setup screen, so I'm going to hit Start Setup. And first of all, we have to have uh, some privacy toggles. So Location Services and Problem Reporting. I'm going to leave both of those on just for the sake of this video. Uh, then we do we want to enable third-party repositories? I'm gonna say yes. I'm pretty sure that enables FlatHub uh, If I remember right, so that would be good to have out of the box even though it's a security nightmare Before we continue, let's just talk a little bit about FlatHub and why it's an issue uh, So you'll see that I did enable FlatHub just now But keep in mind that there's very little verification of any software that gets put up on FlatHub and often with FlatHub, you're not getting your software from the people who actually developed it. You're getting it from some guy who's packaged it in that format to then uh, have you install. So always do some research on what software you're installing from FlatHub. Use the program called FlatSeal to granularly control the permissions that your different flat packs have on your Fedora Linux system and give them the minimal set of permissions that they need to function. And it's just something you should get in the habit of doing every time you install a new piece of software. FlatHub is basically the equivalent of downloading an EXE off the internet. Uh, I know that's not gonna be very popular to say, but honestly, it's the truth. Uh, you're, you're, this is no better than Windows users trolling the internet for EXEs. It's just as insecure is just as prone to exploits, and I think that overall it's a hindrance in terms of security. So use FlatHub at your own risk. All right, so do we want to connect any online accounts? I'm gonna say no, so we're skipping that. And then here's the first bit of information it wants about us. So our name, so my name is Pat Cyber. My username will be Pat Cyber, and I'll make a super secure password. Okay, and that's all I needed. So that setup process took two minutes and a rant. Uh, so that's not bad at all. And then do we want to take the tour? I'm going to say no because I'm giving the tour right now. Uh, so you'll see I'm running this in a virtual machine, so the animations aren't going to be there. Uh, generally, there's an animation for everything that you're going to see, but because this is running virtualized and it knows that it's virtualized, it's disabling the animations. So do excuse that. I hope that you can still get a good idea of what the interface is like. Just know that this isn't the fairest representation of it. Uh, so that being said, this is Fedora Linux and we have one button up here and one button up here and one button in the middle and that's all we've got on the screen by default. It's very minimalist, uh, which I do appreciate quite a bit. So we have the notifications and calendar here, along with the do not disturb toggle. Then we have the overview. So if we, if you see you get the dock down here when you go into the overview, if we open a couple applications. And you can also access that overview by hitting the super key. See if that happens. Yeah, so the super key opens the overview, and you can see you get this kind of expose of your open windows. Uh, so let's get into the terminal. Yep, that looks the same. It doesn't look like they updated the terminal to a new version. I do notice that the name of the application used to be up here in the corner, and it's not there anymore. So that's interesting. I would like to enable dark mode. Let's take a look at this uh, quick toggles menu. So 
Yeah, it's very basic. I don't see anything new here. Maybe the screenshot button's new. That's kind of nice. Do I, I can do a window too. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> that's really nice. And then I can view it, right? Yeah, I know that there's software updates, I know. Oh, that looks great. And it gives it a border too. Well, what can I say? It's really basic. It's a really basic system. There's not a lot to it. Uh, as far as pre-installed apps, we've got LibreOffice and uh, boxes to run virtual machines. And really that's the only items of note. Uh, everything here is pretty, pretty standard out of the box stuff that you would expect. Uh, however, I, I don't see any major changes from the last version of Fedora, which I used, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, one thing that's cool about open source is that it evolves really quickly a lot of the times. Oh, well, let me rephrase that. It'll go from being really quick sometimes to really slow a lot of the time. But there are these little sprints in between the slow patches, and those are really exciting. It just doesn't look like we're in that situation right now. This is very much an incremental upgrade from the previous version. It does look like the file browser is somewhat different, right? I noticed that this is centered now, and it has this hamburger menu here, this three dot menu here, and this menu here, which all look very similar, and also like don't really tell you what they do. If you hover over it, it says what it does. Okay, so that's not so bad, uh, but I really don't like this kind of thing where they just use really vague symbols and you have to guess what's going to be behind those symbols because three dots, you might think that'll collapse this menu. You might think that it will open a sub-menu, and it does, which is one of the options that it can do. Uh, but really, you can't look at that and know for sure if the option you're looking for is gonna be here, here, or here. Uh, so it's really kind of hard to find what you're looking for when developers do this. It looks pretty, yeah, but I do consider that to be a usability issue. So that was a look at Fedora 39. I'm really kind of underwhelmed here. I mean, it's pretty, the interface is great, uh, but nothing that really stands out to me. So now let's talk about why I switched from Linux to Mac OS. So Linux has come a long way in the last few years. It's become much more user-friendly. It's become much more streamlined and integrated and it's, the updates have been really massive. Like I said earlier, sometimes with Linux and open source, you have periods of slow, of slow movement, but then you hit these sprints that are really exciting, and it, there, there's always some project that has a sprint going on, so there's always something to be excited about, uh, and it's really great to see all the progress that the open source and Linux communities have made over the last five or so years. It's really impressive. Application packaging has also gotten a lot better. Snaps and flat packs are great packaging formats, however, they are a little bit of a security nightmare, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, but as far as they as far as their technical behavior and the way they function, they're really great. And then gaming on Linux is so much better than on Mac OS. If you're going to use Mac OS, you're basically saying that you're not going to game anymore. Linux also has some advantages over Mac OS. It's more private than Mac OS. It's simpler than Mac OS. It's logical and easy to understand with its inner workings. Although it does get somewhat complicated if you dig deep enough, it enables you to dig that deep and really figure out some crazy ideas. But there are a lot of issues with Linux. Uh, first of all, the the terminals needed to do a lot of things, which is also the case in Mac OS and Windows. Uh, it's just a good idea to learn how to use the terminal, uh, but it is needed more often on Linux than on its counterparts, Mac OS or Windows, which isn't a bad thing. Like I said, the terminal's a great piece of software on every platform I've used, uh, just because the concept is so usable. Uh, but when it comes to your general person, your everyday person using an operating system, if you have to open up the terminal to do something, they're going to mentally check out, they're not going to pay attention to anything you do, they're going to file it under too complicated for me, and they're never going to do it on their own. It's just a fact. Also, obviously on Linux there's a lack of applications. 
So this is one of the big reasons why I've switched to macOS, because all of my applications are available on it. Things like the Adobe Suite, Microsoft Office. I know it's a cliche at this point, uh, but if you really want the best tier of tools that you can get for creative and office work, you're not going to get that on Linux. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Office suites on Linux are amazing, and it's great that you have these options. Uh, but if you're going to be cooperating with others in a work environment, then you're not going to be able to get by off LibreOffice, and that's just the way it is. And also, depending on what your business does, you may not even get a say in what word processor you use, but I bet you that it's going to be Microsoft Word. So there's value in using the same tools that you used in your work life and your personal life, as long as you find their privacy policies agreeable for what you're doing with them. Also, snaps and flat packs are a security nightmare. Uh, you know, anybody can load up anything to the Flat Hub store, and there's very little verification involved. And a lot of the software on the FlatHub store is not published by the developer, but published by some random third party who's packaging it for you in that flat pack format to distribute through FlatHub. It's not secure, and you probably don't want to be using that software that some random guy packaged for you. Like, oh my god, it would be so simple to sneak something nasty in there. And it's happened, too. If you've been paying attention on the news, FlatHub has been hit recently with some of these malicious packages, along with the Snap Store. Neither one is immune, and both of them have a lot of maturing to do before they're considered safe places to get software. Also, there's just obvious vulnerabilities in Linux that go unpatched until something bad happens. Like recently with KDE, the fact that user themes that you can install from the settings app of KDE allow the creator of the theme to execute arbitrary code on your system. Uh, with That was never very clear, and it's, you're getting to it from the built-in settings app in the desktop, so you, you imply some implicit trust to it because of that. But unfortunately, there was a guy who installed a theme, I don't know which theme, uh, but they installed it and it deleted his home partition because it had a bug in the code. And that's just an obvious security hole. Anybody who's made a theme has probably had the passing thought uh, it would be easy to sneak something bad in here. And the themes don't get any review. So of course, you know, uh, thankfully the only thing that happened here was a bug and not someone being outright malicious. But now that the Pandorica's box has been opened, there's going to be malicious themes now. And here's the thing, right? You can actually get the software that you want on this thing. Like, let's go into the App Store, and let me just show you. If you are new to, if you're using a Mac for the first time, and you're trying to uh, figure out where to get your software, you would just open the App Store. Oh, look at that. You have Microsoft Office, and you're able to install it. Uh, so, you know, that might be a hard requirement for you, and there it is right there. But obviously, the Adobe apps are also compatible with Mac OS. You just get them from the Adobe website. But those are two big vendors that create software that you probably need to function in a business environment adequately, and that it's available here, you can use it. And it's not Windows. That alone is a big selling point to me. It's got the software I want, but it's not Windows. And that's the thing, you know, macOS is not as private as Linux. macOS is definitely not as private as Linux. Uh, the thing is, you know, Apple does collect a lot of telemetry from you, uh, you should assume that anything that you put in iCloud can be read by Apple unless you have advanced data protection enabled. Uh, but it's just not as secure, or not, it's not as private as Linux. Although, I would say it is more secure than Linux, it is not as private. You know, those are two very different things that you measure differently. And Linux is definitely the more private option, Mac OS is frankly the more secure option. Just because it has protections like the built-in sign system volume, where the, the base OS is read-only, and I know that there's Linux distros like Silverblue that do the same thing, where they have a read-only base system, uh, but with macOS you get that, and you get the virtualization-based security, and you get an antivirus, and you get code signing by developers, 
Uh, it's just a, a more in-depth security model than what you get on Linux, which is not insecure. Uh, it's just less secure, if that makes sense. So I'm still going to use Linux. I still have a laptop that's running Linux. I have a tablet running Linux. I have a server running all kinds of Linux virtual machines. And the host OS itself is running Linux. And I have virtual machines on my Mac which are running Linux. Uh, so I'm not going to stop using Linux anytime soon. But when I sit down at something, when I'm sitting down and I need to get some work done, I need to make something, I need to create something, I'm going to be using my iPad or my Mac. Uh, that's just because these are the right tools for the job for me. They're what work best for me. Uh, and I think that it's important that you look at your needs and then you decide what works best for you. Anyway, my name is Patrick. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe the button on the side and hit the bell icon. I don't know what it does, but I hear people say it, so I, I want you to do it. Also, I'm so desperate for subscribers. If you subscribe, I will do anything for you. Just shoot me a message and tell me what you need to do and I will do it. Any, all you have to do is subscribe and I will do anything, anything. I will, I will kill a man.